Cauchy. Let's look at the derivatives of periodic functions because certainly um, in a biology class you're going to have lots of good examples of periodic behavior. Okay, just meaning they repeat, they repeat, they repeat. Um, hopefully you kind of remember um, the trig functions from pre-cal. Hopefully, yes. And so here's some examples of periodic behavior, heartbeat, breathing. And we hope that repeats, right? <laughs> and so as you're going to see, there's going to be some good examples where we're going to use trig functions. So we need to think about the six trig functions that you learned from pre-cal, sine, cosine, tangent. And then if you remember that these on the right have something to do with these on the left, kind of, sort of, the secant, one over sine, cosecant, one over cosine, and um, cotangent, one over tangent. All right, so how do we find the derivative of the sine function? Well, let's go back to our definition. Remember, this is why you learned the long way, and then everything shortcuts now, um, because to be able to prove and find how to find the derivative, say, of a trig function, we go back to our limit definition. So the very first thing I do is where I see x, because this is my function, I plug in x plus h. And where I see x, I plug in x. And then the next thing I do is I remember my identities. Ooh, you remember, do you remember this identity? Do you? Do you? No? So right there, that's why you Googled it. So this piece right here gets replaced by this identity. So I plug in this identity. And then from here, you can see that the first term and the last term, I'm going to factor out a sine of x. So I'm left with this cosine h. And if I factor out a sine of x, I'm only left with 1. And then that middle term stays the same. And then from here, I kind of break things apart. So I bring the sine of x out front and the cosine of x out front because I'm being lazy, but this limit is actually being repeated every step of the way. Well, if I have the limit h approaches 0, I really only care about this piece because this is just a constant. And so that's what this is saying here. The definition of finding a derivative is taking the limits as h equals 0. So what do those two pieces equal? I got no clue. So in the very beginning of this course, what we did is we said you just picked really, really small values for h to see if you could tell um, as h is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, what's the value of your function getting to, and you can see it in the graph. But if you don't know, you can look here and see it's getting closer and closer to 0. This piece over here is getting closer and closer to 1. And so from there, I plug in that piece we said is getting close to 0. That piece is getting close to 1. So the sine of x times 0 is 0. Cosine of x times 1 is 1. Therefore, ta-da, the derivative of the sine is the cosine. Okay, so that's going to be something now with a shortcut you're just going to use, but this is the proof of it. I could look at the actual graph of the derivative. So the red is the graph of the derivative. How did we graph derivatives? Remember where it's flat? Everywhere it's flat has a horizontal tangent. I would be on the axis because that would be my slope would be zero. This is the graph of the slopes. Here the slope would be 0. Here at pi over 2 the slope is 0. And then 3 pi over 2 is the slope of 0. Function is increasing until it hits that 0. So it would be above the x-axis. Then it decreases until it hits the pi over 2. So that would be all of this. Then it increases till it reaches the pi over 2 pi over 2, so that's all of this, and so on. So it shows that even by the graph, if you graph all the slopes of the sine, you actually get the cosine. And so again, this is how I graph it. Find where you get the zeros, and then find the increasing and decreasing to be able to figure out the graph. 
All right, we can find, do the same exact steps and use that trig identity that you don't remember. <laughs> that was sarcasm. And go through all the same steps of my limit definition and find out the derivative of the sine. Okay, we already did that one. The derivative of the cosine is minus sine. So if you went through all these same steps again and found the derivative of cosine, you would actually see minus sine. And if we look at the graph of the cosine, and then I graphed all of the slopes, so again, looking where it's hitting zeros, I would see that that would, remember the sine starts at zero and it goes up? Well, I can see that this is just flip the minus sign. <clears throat> the derivative of the tangent, well, do you remember that tangent is sine over cosine? You remember that, right? Well, if I look at this, this is simply the quotient rule. So the quotient rule says leave derivative of the top, leave the bottom alone, minus leave the top alone, derivative of the bottom, and square the bottom. Quotient rule just did that. And so from, from here, the, we just said the derivative of sine is the cosine, cosine times cosine, cosine squared. Here we just said the derivative of cosine is minus sine, negative sine times a negative sine, positive sine squared. And then I remember an, an identity. This is the only identity students remember. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals, and you're yelling, one, Cindy, one. See, it's, it's all the one students remember. And, of course, I could separate the cosines, and I know one over cosine is secant. And I probably could have just done that here. And I see that my derivative of my tangent is secant squared. So now that we know the derivative of the sine is cosine, the derivative of cosine is minus sine, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, I can find any of these other derivatives because we don't know the connection. If I look at the graph, so remember the graph of the tangent, these green ones, it is always increasing, never hits zero, so never going to hit this axis. Because it's always increasing, it's always above the axis. And I can see that that's the graph of my secants. All right, as I mentioned here, I can find any of these other derivatives. In fact, it would be a nice little activity to make you do is find use the quotient rule. Or you could even bring these to the top and use the chain rule. You know, either way. But I'm going to tell you that here's the derivatives. So we found the derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine is minus sine. Tangent, secant squared. Now I'm telling you without forcing you to go through these that these are the derivatives of secant, secant tangent, cosecant, minus cosecant cotangent, and cotangent minus cosecant squared. All right, I had one student notice that anything that starts with a C are going to be negatives. But just put this on a formula sheet. And now that we have these, we can use them. So if I said find the derivative of this function, well, the derivative of 10, a constant 0. Um, this coefficient just goes out front. The derivative of sine is cosine. And then the derivative of x to the fourth, 4x cubed. And then we can just move things around to make it look pretty. Find the derivative of cosine of x squared plus 1. Well, we just said the derivative of cosine is negative sine. No problem. Easy, right? <gasps> Did you forget? I see two functions here. I see a cosine and I see a quadratic. So I have to use the chain, the chain rule. So the derivative of the outside, I'm going to call the outside cosine of u. And then the inside, x squared plus 1. I think we're going to have an excuse you. <laughs> uh, OK. And so we're going to find the derivative of the outside, which derivative of cosine u would be negative sine u. The derivative of the inside, which would be 2x. How do we do the chain rule? We multiply those two together. And then, please don't forget, we substitute back. Okay, so we're just simply substituting back. But please remember that chain rule. That one will get you.
All right, calculate this derivative, secant of the square root of x squared plus 1. It's a double chain rule. Think about this. I see a secant, I see a square root, and I see a quadratic. So the outer piece is the secant of whatever. The next inner piece is the square root of whatever. And then finally, the inside piece, which is x squared plus 1. Okay, so we haven't done one of these, but now I just take the derivative of each piece. So the derivative of secant u, look on your formula sheet, we just did this one, secant u tangent u. The derivative of the square root of v, 1 over 2 square roots of v. Do you know that? 1 over 2 square roots, so v to the 1 half power, bring the 1 half down. Subtract 1, so 1 half minus 1, negative 1 half. Change the negative uh, 1 half to a positive 1 half. Bring it to the bottom. Okay, so be sure you know how to do that one. And then the derivative of x squared plus 1, 2x. Multiply all these pieces together and substitute everything back. So where you see u, I substitute the square root of v. But then where you see v, I substitute x squared plus 1. And then same thing over here. I, I crossed out the twos. That's why you're like, where'd the twos go? Um, I canceled those out. So this is a good example to pause me right now. Write this and don't look at that. Don't look. Don't you look at that screen and see if you could do this by yourself. If you're looking at that screen, then you're just going, uh huh, uh huh. Good job, Cindy. Well, of course I, I did it, right? Yeah. No, no, you better be able to do that one. All right, applications. We like applications. Um, here, many populations live in environments that change in a periodic fashion with time. Periodic, hey, trig functions. So here we have an algae abundance formula over time can be modeled by n of t equals 10,000 times e to the sine of t. So I want to find the derivative, and then I want to see where the, what time the light's intensity is the greatest. So I find the derivative of this function. The 10,000 is just a number out front, so I'm finding e to the sine of t. The derivative of e to the anything is e to the anything. I see it right, chair. Times the derivative of the anything. You remember that? e to the anything, e to the sine of t, is e to the sine of t, times the derivative of sine of t, which is cosine. So that's my derivative. If I look at my graph of my function, I can see, you know, certainly that it's going to be greatest when I'm hitting 0 uh, when it, and when I'm hitting 2 pi. Determine at what, pop, at what times the population is increasing and decreasing. Well, once again, if I look at my derivative where it's greater than 0, and so I can see that this is happening if I'm only starting here with positive values, above the graph and above the graph. All right, second one, we got birdies. So a bird species found in Ohio oscillates approximately according to this formula, oscillates, repeats, periodic function. I want to graph from 0 to 24 of my function. And then I want to figure out if by the graph, if f prime of 1 and f prime of 10 are positive or negative. What the heck does that mean? Well, it says t is the number of months since June. So June, July, this would say in July is the function increasing or decreasing. Find this derivative and then interpret our results. So if I'm looking here, it says if t is the number of months since June and graph from 0, so I probably shouldn't have that over there, 0 to 24. I don't know why I used um, in terms of pi. <laughs> On here probably would have been better zero, but you know seven times pi is going to be over 21, so my 24 is over here. Use the graph to decide whether f prime of one and f prime of 10 are positive. Well, where on the graph is f prime of one? Looks to be over here, so it's decreasing. And then f prime of 10 um, looks to be around here because there's three pi would be increasing. Find the derivative. Wow, look how magically I did that. How did I do that? The derivative of 19 is 0. The derivative of 
cosine is minus sine. Okay, so I have a feeling that you're looking at this going, I don't know what she did. So let's 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 do this. That we know this derivative is zero. So all we have left is this derivative. Well, throw the nine out front. The derivative of cosine is minus sine. And then by the ch ch oops t, by the ch 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 chain rule, what's the derivative of the inside? I have no idea. So that's like saying 3t, the derivative would be 3. So it's just pi over 6. And then I could, so I have, let's move things around. Minus 9 pi over 6. I don't know what happened there. Times the sine of pi over 6t. I could reduce this fraction and looky, 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 looky right there. Sometimes you got to see those steps, right? So you ask me if you're not sure how I got that number. And now based off of this, I can plug in these values and they should match my graph, right? And interpret them. So if prime of one, I get 27, which says what? As T is the number of months since June, July. So there are about 27 bird species in Ohio in the month of July. If prime of one, I get a negative value. So this tells me, that's my derivative, that in July, the bird species are decreasing by about of 2.4 species birds per month, because that's a rate. F of 10, 24, 10, June, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. Hi, hi, hi. That's where I get April from. And so in April, there are about 24 bird species. And then finally, plugging in. Um, 10. So once again in April, this is the rate that they are increasing. So they're getting it on in April, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. All right. So that finishes the lecture on trick functions. Ask questions if you have.